Kathleen Wynne's hydro sleight of hand. I'm Brian Lilly with the Rebel.media. Just before the 2012 Ontario election, the then Liberal government of Dalton McGuinty wasted $1 billion worth of taxpayers' money to save their political hides. Now Kathleen Wynne, who was part of that government and the cabinet that signed off on the cancelled natural gas electrical plants, is hoping to waste $1.4 billion to save her political hide. Talk about going back to the same playbook. Wynne is trying to convince Ontario residents, residents that feel burned by the rising cost of electricity, that she has the answer. Prices have jumped 70% since 2009 as the green energy plan has steadily kicked in and residents aren't happy. They haven't been for some time. Wynne and others have tinkered with this before. They gave a 10% rebate for a while, then they stopped that. Rates jumped again and again. Anger grew. Her party lost a by-election, so they cut the provincial portion of the HST. Well, they didn't really cut it. They rebate it back onto your bill, which means 8% of all hydro bills now come out of the provincial treasury. So taxpayers are subsidizing the hydro system. Uh, when that rebate didn't stop the anger or stop prices from rising, Wynne stepped forward with her new plan to shift how electricity is paid for without fixing the fundamental problem that she and her party have built an unaffordable system built on unreliable green energy, outrageous contracts for wind and solar, a neglect of Niagara Falls, and insane salaries for top executives in charge of implementing this mess. So what's her new plan? She says she's going to cut hydro rates by 25% starting in June. This generation has been subsidizing not just those who came before, but those who will come next. And that's not right. And it has been notably unfair on today's hydro users. So we're fixing that. We're refinancing the mortgage and we're setting a new term that stretches over a longer period. Over time, it will cost a bit more. That's true. And it will take longer to pay off. That's also true. But it is fairer because it doesn't ask this generation of hydro customers alone to pay the freight for everyone who came before and everyone who's going to come after. Now, always be careful with any promise from any politician, but especially this one. That 25% cut in prices includes the 8% HST rebate that kicked in back on January 1st. So this is a further 17% cut in rates on average. If you live in a city, you'll get less. You live in a small town or a rural area where prices have risen even higher, you'll get more. But how is all of this going to be paid for? Simply put, by moving money around, not lowering the actual cost of generating and delivering electricity, that will stay the same. I mean, why rein in costs when you can just shift the burden? Some changes will simply see taxpayers pick up more of the cost directly. Programs for helping low-income Ontarians pay their bills no longer will that come out of hydro fees. That will come from the taxpayer. For the major change, though, the government will simply extend the financing of, well, generating projects. Now, Wynn compares this to extending the life of a mortgage on a house. But by her own admission, some of the assets that will be paying for over 30 years instead of 10, well, they've got a lifespan of about 30 years, maybe a little bit more. No one builds a house and puts a mortgage on it expecting it to last only 30 years. A mortgage is to buy an asset that will last, like a house. A house that will still be standing in 100 years or more. Something that you can sell if you need or want to. This is more like extending your car payments for 30 years. If the car lasts that long, you've then got a depreciating asset, not something that's grown in value. Her comparison to a mortgage? It's ridiculous. And by the way, this extended financing? it's going to cost taxpayers an extra $1.4 billion in interest payments. Which brings me back to my original comparison. The 2012 gas plant cancellations that ended up costing taxpayers a billion dollars. Well, Kathleen Wynne was not only in cabinet, not only leading the liberal re-election campaign back then, she was on the cabinet committee that signed off on that billion dollar boondoggle. Back then, it worked. The liberals were reduced to a minority, but they won and they saved the seats that were threatened by building power plants in areas that locals didn't want them in. Well, now she's hoping this $1.4 billion in extra interest payments over many years, plus the money shifted from your hydro bill to the tax bill, will save her political fortunes. Want more proof that this is all simply politically motivated? The plan actually states that hydro rates will not be allowed to rise more than the rate of inflation for four years, which puts her at the end of her next mandate if she wins the election next year.
The truth is, because of her bad policies, her bad plans, uh, hydro rates have been galloping upwards much faster than the rate of inflation for some time now. She's known this for years. She's known it was a problem. But for years, she wasn't looking to fix it. Now she is in the hopes of winning the next election. Don't be fooled again, people. Don't let this work. Remember the mission here? It's simple. Fire Kathleen Wynne. If you like the Rebel video you just watched, make sure you never miss another Rebel video again. Click here to subscribe and hey, do us a favor. Maybe share this on Facebook so that your friends and family can see the truth of what's really happening.